hallelujah. What glory? Come on and praise him. Oh, he's worthy of all the praise that we can give him. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Praise him with all your might. And praise him with all your strength. Let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Craig, and I tell you, we're having a time here at Full Gospel. You that are tuned in, we want you to get on the phone and call up a friend and tell them that the Full Gospel Holy Temple Church is on there. Better than that, we'll give invitation to come and be in one of our services and let God bless you so real good. I tell you, God is moving in a supernatural way here at Full Gospel Holy Temple. People are being blessed, they're being encouraged. People are being saved, delivered, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Drug addicts are being delivered. Pray, I tell you, God is healing this sick. Folks are getting filled with the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking in other tongues. We want you to come and bring a friend and let God bless you both. I tell you, pray God, we're having a time here today at Full Gospel Holy Temple. You know, it's a blessing just to enter into the house of God and just be able to lift our hand and praise Him for His goodness. And, oh, glory to God. Why wow, that choir sung today? Let's give that choir a big hand. Didn't we enjoy them? Come on, give them another big hand. And I know, I know, I know you're going to give Jesus a big hand. Wonderful Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. You may be exceeded. We're excited. Amen. About what the Lord is doing today. Even though these are the last days when it looks like everything has taken place. But I want you to know that God is still on the move. Doing the supernatural and the miraculous. We just thank God for what he is to us. You know it's a blessing to be saved. To be sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost. Oh no, we don't hear that very much anymore. Praise God, but in the yesteryears they used to be glad to testify. That they were saved, delivered, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We thank God for that mind that we have to serve him in these last days. Well, praise the Lord, we are excited here at Full Gospel. We're always excited when we're assembled in the house of God. And pray God, enjoy the presence of the Lord. And we just thank God for what God is doing for us in these last days. Amen. And praise God, I would like to praise God just to encourage someone today. You know, praise God, in the midst of all our trials and tribulations, it's time to stop and encourage sometimes we preach against sin and we're supposed to but i think there comes a time that we need to encourage the saints of god and pray god, this is a terrible day every time you turn on the news look like all you can hear is bad news bad news bad news don't got to where i don't even care too much about reading the paper no more Neither watching the news. Every time you turn around, it's bad news, bad news. Somebody is after somebody. Well, but I want to talk to you about a man whose name is Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. He can do great things for you today. He's a miracle worker. Amen. Even though we're living in a day and time, people are preaching that the days of miracles are over. But I want you to know the Bible declared that Jesus Christ is the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. And my Bible tells me he worked miracles yesterday. He's working them today and he will be working them tomorrow. You believe it? Say amen. So if you feel kind of down and out and in the dumps, praise God. And don't feel like being bothered with I want you to listen for the next few moments. I want to try to say something to cheer you up. Ought to encourage you. No doubt of people that didn't get getting disgusted and going home and sitting down. But I don't care how the devil sticks his head up, you should never get discouraged in coming to the house of God. That's where the joy is, that's where deliverance is, that's where peace is. You believe it's shame, man. All right, we want you to get your Bibles and let's turn to the word of God. We're going to the book of Acts, the third chapter. And we're going to begin reading at this first verse. And I want you to listen to the words of the Lord. 
Now Peter and John went up together. Bible said, now Peter and John went up together into the temple. Into the temple at the hour of prayer. At the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour. Being the ninth hour. And a certain man. And the Bible said, a certain man, lame from his mother's lame womb, lame from his mother's womb, which meant he had never been able to walk. Read. Was carried. The Bible said he was carried. Whom they laid daily. Whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple. At the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful. Which is called beautiful. To ask alms of. To ask arm on them that entered into the temple, which entered into the temple. Who seeing Peter and John? Who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple? About to go into the temple, asking arm, asked an arm, and Peter, and Peter, fastening his eyes upon him, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, "Look on said, us." Said, "Look on." Us and he gave heed unto them, and the lame man gave heed unto them, expecting to, expecting receive, something to receive something of them. Amen. Now we thank God for the reading of His Word. I want you to notice this fifth verse where it said, "And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something on them." First, the man gave heed. He paid attention. To what they had to say. Not only that was expecting to receive something from them. The word expecting means to think of accepting something or looking for something. Amen. Now if you notice the Bible said that this man was born. He was lame from his mother's womb. In other words he came into this world handicapped. Maybe some of you on the sound of my voice. Maybe you was not born handicapped, but something has taken place since then. Amen. And you're very discouraged this morning. Praise God. Life is beautiful. But in time, it can deal you a great blow. But I want you to know that in spite of what stage that you might be in, there's somebody doing worse than you are doing. So I want you to cheer up. But there also is deliverance for you. Amen. God is a miracle worker. The Bible said he put miracles in the church. That means anything can happen out of any time. Amen. Praise God to bring it in a nutshell. A miracle is a happening, Webster says. It's something that can take place contrary to the ordinary. Amen. Now, if this man walk, it's going to take a miracle. Maybe in your case, it may take a miracle to get you out of your condition. We're living in a day and time there are sickness and disease everywhere and they're discovering new ones. Amen. There are a lot of sickness today. A lot of trials and tribulations. But I want you to know today that I know a man by the name of Jesus. He can conquer every situation. He can heal every disease. You believe it? Say amen. amen. He is a miracle worker. Amen. Now the Bible said this man was lame. Not only was he lame, but he was poor. He was a beggar. And the Bible said they brought him daily and laid him at the gate of beautiful of the temple. To beg or ask for an arm. This will look like a very good place. Nice folks go to church. This is a good place to beg for a living. Amen. But I want you to know today that's something more important than money. Seems like the world is grasping, grasping after money. But money cannot satisfy in every situation. It cannot buy health. Amen. Even a lot of people making a lot of money off it. But I want you to know today it takes God to heal. You believe it? Say amen. 
We thank God for what man is doing, and I'm not fighting that. Man can assist, a man can help, a man can aid in many different situations. But then there comes a time that man are just unable of all of his wisdom and his knowledge able to help us. Amen. But Jesus is able regardless whether this sickness or whatever it might be, he can solve that situation. You believe it? Say amen. Why? Because he's a miracle worker. And I want you to know today miracles are not just limited to healing. Amen. Maybe you're in a financial crisis. God can work a miracle and get you out of that. You may be imprisoned inside of the jailhouse or outside. God is able to loose you and to set you free. See, there's a lot of people bound. It's not behind balls. The enemy got you in captivity even in yourself. Amen. You're bound. Amen. But I want you to know that Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. Some of you are tormented in your mind. Pray that you can't get any peace. But I want you to know that Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You believe it? Say amen. All you have to do is put your trust in him. And this is why we preach the gospel. This is why Christ is going to all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He wants you to have the good news of Jesus Christ. How he bled, how he died. That we might have a right to the tree of life. He wants you to know he's a man of love and compassion. When everybody's turned their back on you, turn you down, Jesus will come to your rescue. You believe it? Say amen. But you got to learn how to pay attention. See, the Bible said faith come by hearing and hearing comes by hearing the word. You believe it? Say amen. This once you have the word, then you must expect a look for something to take place. You believe it? Say amen. The Bible declared that this man was a beggar. He was handicapped. Can you can visualize yourself not able to move? The Bible said they carried him. He could not walk. He was physically unable to walk. Amen. Therefore, he was unable to work. He had to depend upon somebody else. Maybe you don't the sound of my voice today. Maybe you're like that. Maybe you're in a wheelchair and can't walk. Maybe you're laying flat on your back and can't turn over. But I'm here to encourage you today that Jesus can come in and fix it while you can get out of that wheelchair. Pray that God can fix it while you can turn over. In my mind as I speak, I think about my sister-in-law some years ago. Pray that she was stricken with something. I don't know what it was. But it paralyzed her from her neck now. She couldn't even turn over, couldn't use her arm, couldn't use her finger, couldn't use her hand. Yeah, but through prayer. Somebody said prayer changes things. You believe it, say mine. Even though she was laying there in that shape and couldn't turn, but she believed God. And her expectation was that I'm going to walk again. So you got to be determined. You got to make up in your mind. Take your stand on the word of God when you can't even stand up. See, this is a spiritual thing. You may not can stand up, but bring it into your spirit. You can still stand on the word of God. Are oh, you listening to me? Get me first John 5. In 14, listen to what the word of God says. Faith come by hearing and hearing comes by hearing the word. Am I? Jesus loves you. And he wants you to deliver. This is why they told us to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. Read. And this is the confidence. The Bible said this is the confidence. That we have in him. That we have in him. Faith builds your confidence. Yeah. You believe it? Say man. Maybe you're a beggar on the streets and you can't do any better. But listen, I come to bring you the good news. God wants you to prosper and be in help as your soul prosper. You believe it? Say amen. This is the confidence that we have in him. 
that if we ask anything, that if we ask anything according to his will, ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. The Bible teaches us the will of God. Are you listening to me? The Bible put miracles in the church so it's God's will for you to have a miracle. He put healing in the church so it's God's will for you to be healed. You believe it, Shai, man? This is the confidence that we have in him if we ask anything according to his will. The will is the word of God. You believe it, Shai, man? And I want you to know that God loves you. Well, glory to God. Over 1900 years ago, he went to Calvary. Though he hung, bled, and died that you could be saved. Are you listening to me? You may be a drunkard on the streets, but the good news is that you can be delivered today. You may be a drug addict, whatever you might be. If you want to be delivered, you need to learn to act. Then expect God to do something. Read. Verse 15, and if we know that he heareth us. And if we know that he heareth us. Whatsoever we ask. That whatsoever we ask. We know. We know. That we have the petitions. We got that petition. That we desired of him. That we desire of the Lord. You believe it, Shay, man? I'm persuaded to believe. This old boy didn't know anything about the gospel. You know, sometimes we come to church and still don't know anything about the gospel. And I'm persuaded that his relative, whoever brought him there, wasn't interested in him getting saved that they took him on the inside. But they left him on the outside that he might beg. Ah, but I want you to know that something better than silver and gold. There's something better than bread and wine. You believe it, Shay, man? Well, glory to God. And while he was there in my mind, I can see him. Shaking his little cup, getting a few dollars and a few dimes to make a living. Ah, but one day, two Holy Ghosts, I said two Holy Ghosts, field preachers, tongue talking preachers, miracle working believing preachers came by and they looked at this man shaking his cup. They was poor nationally so, but they was rich in the spirit. They was rich in the Holy Ghost. And they was there when Jesus said, the work that you see me do, shall ye do in greater work than these shall ye do. You see me lay hands on the sick. You're going to be able to do it. You believe it? Shame at. So in my mind, I can see them. On the way to prayer meeting, three o'clock in the evening, gonna have a little talk with the Lord. You believe it, Shay, man? But as they passed by the beggar, the Holy Ghost hunched them, called them to look. This fellow sitting by the seesaw, sitting by the side. You believe it, Shay, man? Praise God, and he said, talk to him, preach to him a little bit. Faith come by hearing, and heaven come by hearing the word. I can see him shaking his little cup. But I heard Peter say, silver and gold, have I not? Woo! Silver can make things convenient, but silver and gold can't heal. You believe it, say man? And when you're sad, many times it can't comfort you. Ah, but I know a man. By the name of Jesus, he can heal your sin sick soul. He can heal your body when it's rocking with aches and pain. He can stop the pain. He can call the lame to walk, call the dumb to talk, the deaf to hear. You believe it, shame on ah, He can call an alcoholic to lay his bottle down and pick up a Bible. You believe it, shame on The Bible said Peter looked on this man with John and he began to say silver and gold have I none but search as I have. The man came now to beg but I believe it had to, it was the anointing 
in Peter's voice. Said, silver and gold have I none. But saints as I have, I give thee. And the man mind change from silver and gold. What, what do you mean? You don't have any silver and gold. What do you have? What you got? Am I? And being a Holy Ghost field preacher, I know Peter, when he got his attention, he preached to him a little bit. He talked to him about the love and the compassion of God. I believe he preached to him of God's miracle working power. How God could save, how God could heal, how God could deliver. How God could stand him on his feet and let him walk for the first time. Listen, beloved, you're on the sound of my voice. Maybe you'll never walk, but I want you to know Jesus can stand you on your feet. Maybe you haven't been on your feet in a long time. God can still stand you on your feet. Maybe you're stricken to a wheelchair, but God can stand you on your feet. You believe it? Say amen. The Bible said the man taking heed, which many paid attention. If you want God to do something for you, you got to stop long enough to pay attention to the word of God. Faith come by hearing, and hearing come by hearing the word. You believe it? Say amen. Though through the gospel, prayer, it can reveal to you how God loves you, what God can do for you. You believe it? Say amen. So if you're discouraged this morning, I want you to listen. I want you to be encouraged. Maybe man has forgot you, but God has not forgot you. I'm reminded of a story that I read one time. There's a great big healing and salvation campaign in this city. Here the man had some type of arthritis where he couldn't even walk. And his friend said, well, I believe we'll take him to this meeting. And when they got him to the meeting, they got him there early. And quite naturally, a lot of more people there early trying to get in. The doors was closed. They had to sit around and wait. So they said, for the people that brought him, went to the door and talked to the doorman and said, well, could you just let this man sit on the inside till they open up and the service start? He couldn't walk like the one I'm preaching about now. They said, all right, so... They shoved him in there in a cloth, like a dark hall outside of the auditorium. So when they opened the door, everybody rushed in and everybody forgot this fella sitting back there in the dark hall. Folks got saved, they got healed, they got delivered, and got set free. Then when they turned out service and his friends were getting ready to go home, they said, wait a minute, we... We forgot about, I said, call him Sam. So we forgot, well, why is he? So they went to investigate to find out where he was. And he was still sitting back there in that hall. So they went on and prayed. They apologized and said they were sorry. They forgot about him. And they went on and put him in the car and took him home. Praise God. Then they went on home. So the next day, they decided that they would go out to see how he was doing. When he went to the house, Sam wasn't in the house. So they began to search, they began to look around for him and finding somebody looked out there in the garden and Sam was out there digging weeds out of the garden. They were so excited, they went up and asked him what happened. He said, well, while I was sitting back there in that dark hole, yesterday something took place in my life. What I'm trying to get you to see, sometime man will forget you. But God won't forget you. His friend took him to the meeting, but they forgot him and left him in the dark hall. But while God was working in the auditorium, he tipped back there in that dark hall. And that man sitting there in the dark, looking and expecting to receive something, received his deliverance. They said, when did it happen? He said, when I was sitting back there in the dark hall. He said, why didn't you say that? He said, I wasn't sure. <laughs> but this morning I found out it was real. This man, when Peter began to speak to him and said, seven gold have I none, the Bible said he took heed, looking and respected to receive it. If you want God to do something for you, you got to 
take heed. You got to listen. Then you must look, expect God to do something for you. When you come down to this altar, come down here expecting God to save you, expecting God to heal you, expecting God to deliver you, expecting God to meet your need. You believe it? Shame, man. Woo. Peter said, Seven gold have I none, but Satan I have, give I thee. Now, with that anointing moved up on, he returned and got that fella there by the hand. Now, mind you, he had never been able to walk. But Peter yanked him up. <laughs> and the Bible said, immediately, his anchor board received strength. He began to leap. He began to jump. He began to rejoice. Why? Because God gave him a miracle. Why? Because he was looking and he was expecting it. You believe it? Say mine. Woo! Sometimes things look awful critical. Look like it can't be done. That's the shape this old boy was in. Man, them old legs were stiff. Couldn't stretch them out. But when that... A shot of that Holy Ghost went out of Peter's hand and went down through pretty that body. When it got to the end of his feet, he just made a reverse. And Brother Pricker just knocked all of that old stiffness out. And that brother got up there and began to shout. He grabbed Peter and hugged him. You know, if you'd hug a man today, they'd say you're funny. <laughs> But brother, he was so happy. He just grabbed Pete, got a big arm of Pete on him. He was just shouting and praising God. Why? Because God had delivered him. God still had that same delivering power. You believe it? Shame on! He still heals. He still delivers. But you must hear. Pay attention. Take heed. Believe. See, this old boy, when he heard, man, he was expecting. He wanted what they had. Do you want to be saved? Do you want your life changed? You come down to the altar expecting that to take place. Or maybe you're sitting there listening to this TV. God can change your life. Sitting right there in front of the TV. God can let you get up and walk. Right there before that TV. All right, get your mind on the Lord. You don't understand my voice. You that are listening to that radio in the Democracy Center. You that are listening to me by the means of television. Get ready. I'm getting ready to pray for you. You that want to be saved. Listen, beloved, God love you. Over 1900 years ago, Christ died that you could be delivered. All right, get ready. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today. We ask you to look on everyone that's listening by radio, everyone that's watching by television that want to be saved. God, forgive them of their sin. Lord, loose them. God, deliver them and set them free. And we thank you for it right now. Those that are sick in the body, bound by a wheelchair, whatnot, whatever the need might be, God. God, will reach forth with your mighty hand. Touch those six bodies. Let your healing virtue go through those bodies. Oh, God, touch it, heal them, and raise them up for your glory and honor. Though behind prison bars, God, loose them. God, set them free. Though a prison in their own home, God, set them free. We thank you for it right now. 